Hi y'all, Carrie Stevens here. And today we're gonna be talking about human AI teaming. And I'm also gonna relate that to social listening because I think the two work together pretty well. So let's start off and talk about what social listening is. It's really that monitoring of social media. Uh, a lot of times you're using keywords to try to help you find important information around trends and also to help you identify potential problems, maybe as they're growing, maybe people are complaining, lots of different ways that you can set up your social media and use some fantastic automated tools that help raise these kind of issues for you by monitoring all these different types of feeds. Now, another thing that can happen is you can actually do what's called human AI teaming. And the way that I think about that is that it's often used right along with social listening and it's a form of what's called machine learning. And you can think of that as something that is kind of like artificial intelligence, but it's really more of kind of this manual process of teaching a machine to actually learn patterns. And then what people do is they go in and they review what the machine has done and they say whether it's right or wrong. And over time, they're actually working with computers to be able to identify important information. And once again, this is often done on social media, but it can be done in, through documents. Uh, it can be done in a lot of different ways. So. We did a study at UT where we studied the humans that were involved in training these artificial intelligence technologies. And what you'll see on here is an example of a tweet that happened during COVID. And my uh, colleague and I were online observing people as they were doing what's called labeling these tweets. So if you look at the top of the tweet, you'll see that there's this prevention risk, positive sentiment, negative sentiment line. That's what they were labeling. They would look at a tweet and they would say, oh, that's positive, that's negative, and then they would go on. And this study was actually funded by the National Science Foundation, and the team went on to get several more additional National Science Foundation grants. So let's take a look at this human AI teaming kind of in a broader perspective. You may have heard of the term crowdsourcing. What was done for a long time is that you actually had people sometimes located around the globe and they would all log into a system and their responsibility was to label these tweets or to label these bits of social media. I still call them tweets, y'all. I'm sorry. I know it's supposed to be X now, but I don't even know what to say. So I'm probably just going to call them tweets. Um, and so crowdsourcing work has been done for probably 10, maybe even 15 years now, ever since social media was a thing. And what our team did is we applied it to COVID-19. Now, a couple of key differences of what we did with our study is we included an expert on our team. And in this case, it was an emergency management uh, coordinator. And he really understood the nuances of what do they care about in terms of information that we're getting from these social media posts and what doesn't matter for emergency operations. Because if you're gonna label and identify bits of information, you want them to be useful. Another key thing is we involved what's called the Community Emergency Response Team. And you may have heard of these groups. They're volunteers. They receive some training in emergency management, and then they are called upon during any type of an emergency to help out. We also did this real time while COVID was happening. Um, and it was what we called a multi-phased machine learning approach. And I'll give you a little bit more details about how we did that next. And ultimately we were watching and observing the humans who were labeling this data because we wanted to better understand the challenges that they faced. 
Finally, the system that we used was called Citizen Helper, which is another tool that's been developed uh, with National Science Foundation funds. So we asked this kind of broad question, what makes a human in the loop a valuable AI teaming partner? Now, what do we mean by human in the loop? Well, you know, we talked about a lot of social media, media listening is done just by a machine. The, the human is kind of coming in at the end, and maybe the human is setting up all the parameters at the beginning. Here, the human is truly in the loop throughout this process to try to hone, train, and help the machine learn to better identify patterns on their own. So the approach we took is, first of all, we observed people who were providing those labels, and that was then sent into an AI-infused machine. And the second thing, which is really key here, is that we observed people when they didn't only label the data, but all of a sudden the machine had tried out and was learning. And we took that information, sent it back to those same CERT team volunteers and said, correct the machine. Tell the machine whether or not it was right or it was wrong. Now, I want, as I go through these two examples, I want you to think about this, okay? Because I think that the implications from this study affect every single one of us very deeply. All right, so the labeling of that data, first step, right? People really kind of thought of the computers as, in this case, a toddler. Oh, you know, it just does what it's told. And the computer's not stupid. It's just not trained yet. So if it makes mistakes, you know, it's something that we've just got to teach it to do. I also had a, a one of our CERT team members who talked about it was like training a puppy. Oh, it's going to make all these mistakes and you're just going to have to be patient. Um, it's just a computer. It's just like a puppy. Now, before I give you the example next, I want you to think about what I said. Remember, after they helped the machine learn, now what happened is we gave them information back in the same format and the machine had labeled the data. And people were asked to correct the machine. This, I think, is something that I have thought a lot about because all of us will be working with artificial intelligence on a regular basis. And we have to remember that the machines are not perfect, right? And so as I show you this quote, I want you to think about the fact that the person who said it actually worked in the banking industry he worked with artificial intelligence every day in his job, and still, this was his comment. I'm going to give you a minute to, to read it, because I think it's really an important thing for you to think about. So essentially, what he's talking about is now he's doubting his own ability and he didn't doubt his ability whenever he was training the machine. I thought a lot about this and about why people might doubt their own abilities and where this self-doubt comes in. I've seen it really consistently with people working with artificial intelligence. So I have a few key takeaways and I want all of you to remember this. When you're working with AI technologies, and that includes large language models that we're using so much more today, please remember that you are the human and you are the expert, okay? Do not doubt your own expertise. Don't just automatically assume that, oh, well, the machine says that. Maybe the machine is right and I'm wrong. Every time that that goes through your brain, I want you to sit there and go, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, the machine might be right, but I also might be right. So this question and dialogue that's going on in our own heads when we work with these technologies is so crucial, so important. And I really want you to walk away and think a lot about how much are you just assuming, huh, it's a computer, it's right, because it's not always right. Thank you all so much.